So it's a privilege to be here. I love what Franchise for Humanity is about. And the future is the now fast forwarded. So what we do now will create a different future. And I also love um, the gentleman that just spoke, uh, possibilities for possibilities. I love that concept. Life is always moving towards a greater, fuller, freer self-expression of itself. And that is happening within an evolutionary process that requires both growth and change for its fulfillment. You are so much greater than any thought you've ever had of yourself. You have a much greater potential than you've ever realized. You are absolutely magnificent. And when you stand in your magnificence, you align with a soul force that has unlimited possibility. It's not just us that has an unlimited potential, but life itself is always moving towards a greater realization of itself. And life has within itself a seed. And in Buddhism, they talk about the bodhicitta, which is the seed of awakening. And they actually believe that that seed is within every individual, and it's also in the world. And when we are in an evolutionary process and develop ourselves, at some point, that seed awakens in us. And this is a possibility for the world, because the world is evolving. And as we're part of the world, and as we create change in the world, we are evolving the world idea until we have a world that is much more awake than it is now, and where we have human beings that are much more awake, who are not only living their own lives, but they are participating in a world where they're really creating change. And you know, one of the questions is, how come we don't realize the fullness of who we are? And I've been studying for quite some time in my own life, and now uh, writing a book with Denise on potential and realizing potential. And a couple of things that there's many elements that I feel are really important to realize potential. But two, specifically, is to be open to change and to also uh, be willing to transform. And it's very interesting, because if you look at biology, everything is change. If you study physics, everything is change. If you study Buddhism, everything is constantly changing, except human beings don't really like change. And there was a study that was done a number of years ago. And I think there's like 90% of human beings don't like change. So it's another thing I've been having these conversations when I travel and with clients. What is it that they don't like about change, since everything is so much change? And I've, uh, many, many different things have come through. But there is one is it feels unexpected. Another is that it's uncertain. Another is that it's unknown. You know, people don't know what they're going into. And I would say a couple of things that are part of people not wanting to change, but also it becomes an obstacle to the greater realization of your own potential and who you are and what's possible for you. And in a similar sense, it also becomes a limitation for the world and how the world can evolve as well. And one is that there is, within a human being, is also part of the mind is part of the reptilian brain, that there is a certain part of us that fights for coherency. And any place that we are, there's a part of the mind that will come in and make a cer certain coherency at it. And everything that we try to learn that's new is often interpreted in that same coherent system. So change, real change, doesn't happen. And transformation is something that's totally outside of that. And there is. A, that part of the brain and part of the mind that fights for coherency, it will fight for coherency even though that coherency is limiting, even though that coherency is painful, and even if that coherency is outright dysfunctional. And there is such a pull to the familiar that we have to be aware of, because even those of us who are about change or are in a transformational process or want to be in a transformational process, we have to know how strong that gravitational pull towards the familiar is. And we have to learn how to tolerate a certain instability, which happens. I mean, all growth happens during unstable times. You know? And it's not that we should always be unstable, because 
Growth is about, you know, it's expansion, it's instability, you come to a new level, you ground in it, and then there's the next stage of opening up again. And so there is this sense of tolerating, learning to tolerate a uh, certain instability that allows us to grow and change and release that uh, need for coherency. And there's also, uh, there's, there's something that keeps us, you know, it keeps us bound, but it, it also is a certain way that we think about ourselves that is part of that coherency. You know, we each have a certain idea of ourselves. And you know, one of the fastest ways to change your life is to shift that idea of yourself. As, um, I can't remember who said it, but if you conceive it, believe it, and you achieve it, right? That's a very, very powerful statement because it really is true. It's like if you can change how you hold yourself, tremendous possibility, you know, comes to you because we're so, you know, thought defines us and it also confines us. And whatever you do not assume about yourself, you can't realize, right? So there is something about what we assume in ourselves is possible. And to move into a place that you've never been before, to be able to conceive of yourself in a totally different way, more expansive way, is a powerful way to actually realize it. There is a very powerful technology that I want to briefly talk about, but it's a much longer conversation. But it really has to do with you know, the power of thought and it's also based on, you know, it's a, it's a philosophic con you know, concept that is called mentalism. It actually says that the, wor the world and ourselves is actually consciousness, okay? There isn't consciousness and then something else. But there actually, if you study matter, all there is is energy, which is very similar to saying it's consciousness. You know, physics has gotten very, it's really very, very close with bringing forth the science from mysticism. And if you realize that the thoughts that you have create your reality, and that if you change who you take yourself to be in thought, you actually can open up your life and in unimaginable ways. And that there is an infant intelligence that we are a part of. And when we step into our own magnificence, we align with the soul force, you know, that is beyond anything we could possibly almost even conceive of. And so this spiritual technology, I'm just going to briefly talk about, it's been, you know, it's been part of the transcendental movement for years. Ford was part of it. Em um, Edison was part of it. There are many great thinkers and great minds that have been embodying this for a very, very long time. And if you start with, you know, visioning something for yourself that you haven't been able to vision before, I mean, imagination is the most powerful faculty that we've got. And it is, imagination is the one faculty that we actually have that we're constantly using but not consciously that is aligned with the creative force in the universe. We're actually, it is through the creative force of the universe that the world comes into being. Uh, Shakespeare talks about this, you know, when he says the world is the stuff that dreams are made of. What he was talking about is this capacity of the mind to envision forth new worlds through the imagination. And so you can just very briefly as I talk about this, maybe we'll have time for a process, but it is about using the imagination, which first of all, we're using all the time. When you have, I mean, most people have an experience that they can't get over, and then they replay it over and over and over again. It's enough we had it once. So the mind, we're constantly using imagination. When we worry, we're using imagination. When we uh, keep rethinking the past, we're using imagination. But this is a way of actually accessing the faculty of imagination in a more conscious way. Because whatever we pay attention to grows. If you look at your life, your life is a reflection of your most dominant thought. And to begin to look at the inner dialogue you go through, you know, what you're saying to yourself over and over again has so much to do with what's possible for you. And so it's about taking a moment really and visioning a larger, more expansive, freer, fuller you to start there. Because if you, you've got to start with yourself and then, that, then you can express it through your life. But if you can 
begin to envision what that would be like because all of life is about increase. Life is always moving towards a more expansive version of itself. And when we hold on and fight for coherency, we're actually blocking that natural expansive movement of life. And we have all kinds of symptoms. Disease is one of them. When we are out of alignment with the deeper soul force within us, there's a lot of symptoms that happen. So to imagine a larger, greater, more expansive, freer version of yourself. And I like to have people kind of look at four domains in their life when they do this. You know, and one is just a version of themselves. But the other is to look at the, you know, the area of health, because if we don't have our vitality, we don't have anything else. To look at the area of relationship, all different levels of relationship. To look at um, one's vocation and also one's financial life. And to begin to envision something that's a much greater, more expansive version of what it is you're living now. And that's, that's the first step, which is to really envision something new. The second is to step into it in such a way that you are feeling the fulfillment of the realization of the version that you've created. And the third is that you've got to give attention to it, and you've got to really give yourself over to that idea so it becomes the most dominant idea of your life. Thank you.